Governor Lynch, our next caller is Dan from Fremont. Go ahead, Dan. Thanks for hanging on. Hello, uh, Governor. Uh, not long ago, I mean, like in the last few minutes, uh, you shut the door on an income tax and sales tax, which I happen to agree with. Uh, but I also am um, curious about your stance on casino gambling. And, Dan, uh, what's your position? How do you feel about expanded gambling as a source of revenue? Well, as far as casino gambling itself um, and the state creating a protected monopoly, I think it's unconstitutional. Okay. Thanks for the call, Dan. It's a good question and one I had for you too, Governor Lynch. Expanded gambling as a source of revenue. Um, thank you, Dan, for that question. I have lots of questions about expanded gambling. I have questions in terms of what it means for our economy, what it means for social costs, increased crime, demands on our infrastructure, dependence on that revenue, where it would go, um, how it would affect our quality of life, which I think we need to be very protective of in New Hampshire. So I haven't closed the door completely on it, Dan, but I do have a lot of questions that need to be answered before I'm willing to consider going forward. And, Governor, I got an email on this uh, yesterday from Jim Rubens, who you know, New Hampshire Coalition Against uh, Expanded Gambling. He says um, just what you said. You stated that you would oppose expanded gambling unless you were shown it would not damage our state's quality of life. But casino gambling in every other state has increased gambling addiction, crime, family breakdown, bankruptcy, suicide. Casinos would divert consumer spending away from existing businesses and blacken our state's image as a family-friendly place. Jim Rubin says, isn't the evidence clear enough for you now to end the ambiguity and shut the door to casinos? There's conflicting evidence. And, you know, I've talked with other governors who have had expanded gambling going on in their states. And they say there is conflicting evidence even after having experienced it for quite some time. So I think we need to put aside the ideology and really look hard at the data and the analysis to see whether it makes sense. But I can tell you, and I'll say this to Jim, I've said it to him before, that I'm very protective of our quality of life here in New Hampshire. You know, we have a great state, as we all know. You know, for the fifth year in a row, we would acknowledge as the most livable state in the country. We're the safest state in the country. So we're doing something right. And we have to be very careful before we put forward a structural change that might jeopardize all that we have that's so special. So the door is not wide open? Well, as I said, Laura, I, I, I'm, 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 again, willing to look at the data, willing to look at the answers to the questions that I have, you know, before I would consider going forward. All right.